All right, here's part two of the Herculiner uh, bed coating on my Ford Maverick. Uh, I'm going to try to be real brief, give you the rundown of what you need to do. So, you're going to need two things. You need the roller that it comes with, and you're going to need a couple little brushes like this. And the reason you need these little brushes is to get up kind of into these corners where the roller will not go. Um whatever it is you're wearing you will destroy it so pretty much period the end um also you're gonna have to put this on in two to three coats maximum because as soon as you spill it on the rim and try to reseal this um this stuff is insanely sticky which is a good thing and i'm not blaming the packaging but this stuff is extremely sticky and I had to literally tear this up to open it again. So this is what you're gonna need. Get some tape to mask off any areas that you're worried about. Um, in this car, they had these panels. I took these off, you know, just to make it look a little nicer, I guess. Um, the roller will get you a pretty even surface. So as I did kind of the center of this bed with the roller, uh, definitely, um, can get some pretty even coverage with the roller. It is time consuming. Um, it's not quite paint. It's not quite asphalt. Uh, it's somewhere kind of in between the two. So uh, it does take a little finesse to get it to lay down in a very uniform way. I was not really all that concerned about the uniformity. Um, I'm really w more worried about the functionality, but having said that, given that this is kind of a rush job or a not attention to detail job, um, I think it came out pretty uniform overall. Uh, again, this stuff is insanely sticky, which is good because what that means is you don't really have to prep the metal surface very much. Um, I think a Scotch-Brite pad is more than enough. Anything that is mildly abrasive is going to give you plenty of adhesion because this is going to stick to pretty much anything. Um, I think within five hours or so out in the sun, this thing was pretty much dry or dry enough to put a second coat on. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. Again, it, it's for light duty use. You know, I am not going to be throwing anvils in here or giant pipe wrenches or you know, jagged metal heavy pieces. It's going to be for boxes, car parts, rims, you know, light duty consumer grade stuff. Okay. Um, and again, you don't really have to do a lot of prep. If you have a well used truck bed, uh, hit it with some dish soap, a good, you know, dish soap or a degreaser, power wash it out, and you're, you know, let it dry thoroughly, obviously, and you're good to go apply it out in the sun so that it starts getting tacky real quick but again you will have to use up pretty much this in two to three uses um having said that this bed's kind of small i probably wasted you know a third of this product but oh well it is what it is um other uses for this because it's kind of rubbery um consider this instead of the sound deadening material for like audio systems uh this is probably much cheaper because the sound the quality sound deadening stuff you know it's good but it's also very expensive this you know has a bit of a rubberized uh finish to it and i think you know to do the trunk of an old car especially old you know 70s cars uh you know get rid of the rust you could use this great budget solution to get something looking nice and cleaned up old truck bed definitely worth the money for sure um you know maybe sound deadening inside doors or on the inside of a trunk lid something like that and obviously you've seen people put these on cars like jeeps and stuff as a as a coating so uh again light duty uh extremely sticky very messy you will get this on your hands you will get this on your clothes you will get this stuff everywhere unfortunately but um you know at about the hundred dollar level um 
I'm definitely seeing this being a good value. Um, and and I, I guess my main thing is is how well this adheres. I mean, it is extremely sticky. And it's, it's not like paint where it's going to flake. You know, paint, if you don't get it on a properly prepared surface, the paint is going to flake off. This, even if you do no prep, I'm seriously doubting that it's going to flake off because I did put this into some unprepared surfaces and like I said I mean it's it's kind of like it's kind of like a runny asphalt so unfortunately I cannot make use of this full can that's my loss but hey what can you do life goes on um but yeah I'm thinking I'm going to use this product in the future to uh uh use in some other projects um you know application time like I said about Two coats will do you, and if you want, what's nice is, um, you know, if you want to make it maybe thicker on this part of the bed where you're going to use it more often than maybe, you know, up toward the cab, you can definitely do, you know, three, four coats, and um, it's pretty thick. So, this is the um, finished result. Not perfect, but again, I did kind of a rush job. If you do take your time and you want it to be a very uniform finish, it can be achieved with the roller and some patience. Um, so, anyway, I'm happy with it. I was a bit skeptical. I'm not really a fan of these DIY coatings. Uh, most of them, frankly, that I've used in the past have been crap, uh, including most consumer, you know, because this is like a consumer grade product. Most consumer grade coatings I have found to be absolute garbage, but. Um, I'm going to give this one a big thumbs up. Um, for a full-size truck, this should be more than enough. I mean, it really should. Um, you should have no problem putting a, doing a six-foot bed with this. Because like I said, I've, this is like four and a half feet, and I've got plenty left, and I've poured out a bunch of it already. So uh, anyway, I'm rambling. Thumbs up for me. Very happy with this. I'm going to be using it again. And uh, cheers. Cheers.